everybody. So we are going to be continuing the trend that I started last summer, which is reviewing books from the knowledge graph and semantics space. And the reason I do this is because so many of you ask me what books I would recommend if you are just getting started or if you want to learn more information about semantics. So that is what we're going to be doing for the whole month of June this year. And today we are going to be reviewing that book and with all of these reviews, I always give away my review copy uh, to someone in the audience. So if you are interested in that, make sure you check the description down below for more details. All right, so with that, let's go get started. Joe Hilger, um, the co-founder and COO of Enterprise Knowledge, and I guess a longtime friend of Zach's. All you, Zach. <laughs> so on the other uh, side of that, Zach Wall, <laughs> co-founder and CEO and longtime friend and collaborator of Joe's. Okay, so this is all about knowledge management and it being clickable. So let me ask you that. What does that mean? What is, first of all, why is knowledge management different than the other knowledge words in this space, like knowledge graph or, you know, knowledge education or, you know, some of these other things? And what makes it clickable? What What is the clickable part? Yeah, so I'll answer the second bit first. Um, we, we named the book knowledge, Making Knowledge Management Clickable for two reasons. One is it was actually supposed to be a little bit of a play on words, making knowledge management click, like mm -hmm. understanding it, getting mm -hmm. the value out of it. It's a really abused term. It means a lot of different things to different people. And so the first thing that we wanted to do with the book is actually once and for all explain what is KM, why mm -hmm. is it valuable, why does an organization need to invest in it? Mm -hmm. uh, but the broader reason making knowledge management clickable was that idea of, of having the average end user employee individual feel the benefit of KM. And a lot of the ways that we do that, both at enterprise knowledge and proceeding in our careers, was to translate KM processes and culture and designs into technology. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was really a gap in the books on KM. There are a lot of kind of academic books about uh, the lofty concepts and processes of tacit knowledge capture and communities of practice, but there was this gap, a real dearth of conversation around KM technologies, how to translate KM into something mm -hmm. that was, say it with me, clickable. clickable. Cool. Well, that makes more sense. And I just as, as you know, a little anecdote, one of the things that I got slammed on so bad in my uh, dissertation was talking about tacit knowledge. Mm -hmm. And I was told by the, the professors um, that, you know, that's not really a real thing. I mean, if you know something, it's no longer tacit. And even though I had plenty of scholarship um, saying otherwise, but, you know, what it was is kind of highlighting why you know, when we'll get to the who who is the audience of your book in a second here, yeah. but um, you know, folks that are going to school to do information management or information science or you know anything that kind of eventually leads themselves into being ontology, taxonomy, semantic folks, because there's not one road to to that kind of career. But what I found when I was doing it was a lot of the the, the university side of things. They didn't really get the part where you did this in in enterprise. And so, you know, hearing you both talk about tacit and looking at this, I'm like, oh man, where was this when I did my dissertation? Right? Right. <laughs> we need more of that. There's, no, there's this not a lot out there talking about this in, um, not to say this is an academic, but really talking about it from a real, you know, in the weeds, in the trenches kind of perspective. So I really did appreciate yeah. that. Thank you for well, that. that. I mean, was, it really was. Oh, I'm sorry, Joe. Go ahead. I was going to say that was one of the drivers. Mm -hmm. Too many projects we witnessed. We'd come into an organization. They'd say, we've tried KM and it didn't work. And we'd say, well, what'd you do? And they said, well, we had all these meetings. We did these, these different um, sessions with each other, but we didn't know what it meant. Like it didn't become anything. We didn't mm -hmm. see the importance of it. And how important is access to knowledge? Well, mm -hmm. Google gives us a sense of that, right? So uh, what if we did that better internally? It, it mm -hmm. seems obvious when you talk about it, but for too many reasons, it doesn't get shown enough. And yeah. that's really yeah. a lot of this. So I guess that's that's the other part of this is, 
you know, when you were writing this, who was the audience that you were really speaking to? Yeah, I, I think it, it began with the in-house practitioner. Uh, mm -hmm. Too frequently, we bump into the KM departments of one, those folks that have been given the responsibility for knowledge management, that have been tasked with the challenge of, of making it real for an organization. And we wanted to give them a resource, really EK's playbook of how to do it. Uh, obviously we want people to come and work with us and hire us, but we recognize the fact that not everybody can, not everybody has the budget for it, not everybody has the resources for it. And so we tried to translate as much as what we do into this book as possible for those folks that are those sort of KM departments of, of, of mm -hmm. one or one half even. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and, and Ashley, this is something that's been a, a credo we've followed and, and had good fortune with, which is, teach others, mm -hmm. really lift KM wherever we can. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if we're doing it or if someone else is able to do it. Mm -hmm. As long as it's happening, eventually mm -hmm. someone will likely call us because we do it well as a company. But but as long as people are doing it and doing it effectively, it's just yeah. good for, for people in this space. And that's yeah, really and I think you you all do that a lot, right? Because you have um, a, a whole blogosphere where, you know, I I know, and I'll, I'll link it up above for anyone interested. One of the top videos still to this day on my channel is is from EK. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean, it it it's it's a a video talking about like how do you get started in in a, in this space, and I think that there's a lot of folks that end up watching this this channel, and I think that you know a lot of them are those practitioners. But I like again going back to the folks that don't have a career yet or are trying to get into this career. I think this is a good book to pick up because one thing I like about it is it's just discussing things in real world applications, and it's very easy to follow. There's a lot of examples. Um, again, you don't always get that. There's even journals uh, that are completely dedicated to this space. Those are also good, right? Don't get me wrong, but. Um, you, it's almost like you get these little snapshots of things that are going on in, in the KM space, whereas this is more talking about like, okay, let's go to the foundation. <laughs> let's start building it up from there, which I think is a, is a good, you know, foundational piece to, to start with. Um, so one thing I did notice in this book when I was reading was there was a lot in the, in the early uh, chapters about doing assessments, kind of like taking a step back and saying, what am I trying to do here? What do I have yeah. here? So why, why did you start there in the book? Right. So uh, again, there were a couple of reasons for this. One is uh, I think sometimes an executive tasks someone with fixing KM or doing KM. And that can just mean so many different things. And I think actually one of the reasons that many KM initiatives have failed is that there wasn't that clear why. What are we going to get out of this? What are the reasons for this? What problems are we fixing? What challenges are we addressing? Mm -hmm. And so one of the reasons that we always stress really that classic consulting of current state, target state roadmap is to ensure that everyone within an organization is aligned on why do we need KM? What will this do for us? What will be the returns on investment? Mm -hmm. And that takes me to the second reason, Ashley. It's not cheap. Uh, not only from a dollar standpoint, but also from a human resource standpoint, a people standpoint. And so to do KM right takes investment. It takes mm -hmm. leadership getting behind it. And what executive in the world is going to say yes to a big budget and committing a ton of time if they don't understand the returns on it, if they don't understand what's in it for the organization? Yeah. And so, so one thing I do want to ask on, on that point, because we talk about it on the channel quite a bit. And Joe, I know this is something that you often talk about in some presentations, which is like, how do you get the buy-in, right? Like, okay, it's, it, it's, it's not just a one and done. It's not just a half a head count <laughs> and someone will go and like figure it out somewhere. So, you know, are there, is it like, if you don't have the money, you can't do this? Or like, what does that look like? What does that, the scope look like? So if I'm picking this book up and I really want to understand where do I fit in? How do I understand the actions I can take from this? Yeah. So I think the first step is 
don't be swayed that, oh, my company doesn't spend enough on KM for me to, to spend time on this, because this book's going to talk about what you can do and, and the ideas you can share, right? At the end of the day, any, any organization that sees value in, in what's being offered will spend money on it. Mm-hmm. And so making KM clickable was always about make it, make it visible enough that it's valuable and, and show it. So when we talk about, um, you know, when, when we talk in the book, we don't just talk about kind of what to do and how to do it. We talk about the benefits from it mm-hmm. and how to build that business case. Mm-hmm. And, and that's, that's so that anyone can take advantage of this and, and help further KM at their organization. Uh, ju- just to expand on that point, we also in the book talk a lot about agile philosophies and methodologies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think you're absolutely right in pointing out that most organizations actually don't have that multi-million dollar, multi-year budget lined up. Uh, KM should prove its value and it can prove its value in relatively small increments of weeks or months and relatively small budgets. Mm-hmm. The key is prove the value, show something, get people behind it, and then ask for more or do more. Build upon the foundations of what you've done. Ooh, that brings up a, a good question. I'll continue. I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up in a sec. Yeah. No, I, I just to, to, to finish the thought, uh, the key is that uh, a well-laid knowledge management strategy, a roadmap will have almost like those Lego building blocks. You build, mm-hmm. you build, you build. Uh, each one shows business value. Uh, and that's how you achieve uh, an enterprise KM transformation, not by this big bang thing where, hey, hang with us. And after two years, we'll do KM. No, mm-hmm. every step of the way, you're getting something for it. So when you're saying that, I, I think back on my time doing some of this. How do you tackle the folks that are like, no, but it's like this thing and it's got to have like these tentacles and it has to do this and it has to do that. And, you know, it's not not building the small Lego. It's building like the multi two thousand yeah. dollar <laughs> mega Lego. Like, how do you get folks that are like that excited? Because you don't want to kill the the vibe, right? <laughs> you also want it to be real that they can get something out of it. Yeah. Well, I'll lead off on this, and then Joe, you can get into the the depths of it. But I mean, let's continue the metaphor, right? Even Lego, those two thousand dollar kits come in little packs where you you build this, then you build that, then you build this, then they all fit together. And I I really think that that's the messaging, no matter how excited somebody is about the big whiz bang thing. uh, How many of those projects have been successful? (laughs) How many of those big bang initiatives worked, whether you're talking about KM or search or graph or anything else, they've all failed. Uh, Mm -hmm. And so we can tell those stories. I mean, we've been doing this a really long time. And I'm really happy to share our successes, but I'm also happy to to share where something has gone awry, mm-hmm. where a project has failed. And I think telling those stories is a really important and I'm glad piece of getting people to do this well. Yeah. Joe? Yeah. And, and you know, and Ashley, this really does go back to Agile. Someone's super excited. That's great. But don't they want that value right away? Mm-hmm. They want to show people what they're accomplishing. So so by by saying, great, we're going to do this giant thing for you. And mm-hmm. we're going to start with this first step and that's going to immediately show value and mm-hmm. you're going to get to start bragging and not have to wait to brag. Mm-hmm. So, so I would say in a way I, we, we play on that excitement, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. They're excited. We want them to continue to be excited. Let, let's make sure that momentum sustains itself. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, and I'm glad to hear that too, because like, so first that I, again, like a lot of that is, is the vibe of the book too, which is, Hey, here's the successes and here's what led to them. And here's the things maybe to be cautioned about. And here's why, Um, you know, it's especially nowadays, like you'll, you'll hear folks uh, talking about this a lot on LinkedIn, like, oh, KM is dead. Long live KM. (laughs) (laughs) I think I wrote that blog. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Like there's a, there's a lot of stuff out there and it's not just not you folks. There's a lot of folks that are talking about this. Um, but last year, um, during this series, I reviewed a different book on, uh, content auditing and we're actually going to have another book on content auditing by, by someone, I think that's a colleague of yours. Uh, later in this season, but um, he he's had a lot of things uh, that he's been posting on LinkedIn about, like, is it dead? Is it alive? Is it, you know, this, you know, amalgamation of other things? Um, so it's it's a little bit of an identity crisis, I think, right now. Like, do you think that that's, that's the, the better way of talking about it? Like, how do we 
how do we understand what this looks like now in this new space that we're in? And I would say a lot of AI has a lot to do with that since that's the biggest disruptor right now. But like, what does that look like right now for KM for those that are like, does it, should I pick this up? Is KM the thing still? Actually, uh, it, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I, I do because I'm so excited about this. I mean, I, we're not feeling an identity crisis at all. I actually think that I've never felt that KM is more central to organizations. Mm -hmm. Now, to be fair, some of those organizations might not be calling it knowledge management, mm -hmm, right? They mm -hmm. might not be using the letters K and M, mm -hmm. but all of the things that an organization must do in order to get AI to work for them, content quality, content structuring, taxonomies, ontologies, these are things that we've spent EK's entire history building, developing, mm -hmm. designing. It's all the stuff that we talk about in the book. Mm -hmm. uh, these are the things that make AI work. And so uh, to quote another one of our colleagues, Luli Tesfai, KM are the cool kids right now, uh, <laughs> perhaps for the first time ever. And it's kind of fun. So yeah. did I? I? I would, I agree. And I would take it a step further. It's funny, search is now hot again, right? Because <laughs> everyone's gen AI, oh, it gives you answers. I need that. I need that in my search. Oh, wait, I have a bad search. Now I need search. So yeah. that's come up. And yeah. then knowledge graphs were, were, you know, were, were great and exciting. And then all of a sudden Gen AI was going to take them away. And then we found out we had hallucinations and you mm -hmm. needed vector search or knowledge graphs to improve that. Mm -hmm. So all those little things we do to make content better organized and information better organized, better structured and more findable lend themselves to like almost every Gen AI project that's mm -hmm. out there. So mm -hmm. I, I agree with Zach. It's kind of come back to our world. Uh, yeah. us, us KM people are sitting yeah. there going, this is wonderful. Well, in, in a similar vein, I mean, I, I kind of feel like RDF was in that camp. Like there was a moment, like I, I've always, you know, known the RDF space um, and can appreciate all of the various flavors of graph uh, that we talk about on this channel. But for a while there, it was like, if you're not doing property graph, like, oh yeah, you're doing that like dusty RDF thing that nobody cares about. <laughs> nobody likes that anymore. And I don't want to say nobody cares about because there was like a very um, like passionate group that was like RDF or bust, right? Um, and now it's coming back because everyone's like, wait, I need to trust my data. I need to be able to verify that data. I need to have like this, this trust factor that you still probably needed in property graph, but having like these these pieces that go along with RDF and and ontologies like Shackle to kind of like help you understand what your data actually should be doing and is it doing it? Can you do those things outside of graph and RDF? Yes. Is it way easier? I think that's why a lot of folks are now like picking it back up, dusting off those RDF books and like, oh yeah, that thing exists. So I should go back to that. So it's it, again, it's like that circle that, that's coming around, which is kind of cool. Um, all right. So in uh, closing remarks, like when someone is is thinking about picking this book up, what are some of the things that you feel they should be taking away from 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 the book? What was your desire that folks would take away from the book? Yeah. So we divided the book into three sections. And, and the first third is what we already talked about, really, about what's the value of KM? What is it? How do you uh, assess where you are as an mm -hmm. organization? Uh, the second third is all about the technologies, all mm -hmm. the pieces that fit together to make up potentially uh, a, an enterprise KM solution. And then the third is, is the how. How do you actually implement those tools? How do you join them together? Mm -hmm. What are the right methodologies? And frankly, what are the pitfalls? What won't work? Mm -hmm. And so if there's a single thing that we hope somebody will get out of this, it's how to do it right, mm -hmm. how to actually make KM work for their organizations, how to get it to stick. Mm -hmm. um, that said, this is also a book you don't have to read from start to finish. This is not a Harry Potter novel. <laughs> you can actually just kind of use the index and, and hunt around if you've got individual questions, if you're getting stuck on a particular technology or a uh, particular uh, need, if you will. It is certainly a magical book, though, I'm just saying. Well, yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. It's a real, real page turner. There, I think I, they're going to turn it into a movie next year. It's gonna oh, be nice, cool. great. I yeah. hope I, series. I, it's going to be Johnny Depp starring. No, actually, that would be a horrible decision. Oh no, we're um, going uh, Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. Oh, oh there you go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Get the dynamic. You like this KM? Yeah, yeah. You like about KM? them KMs. <laughs> 
Could you imagine? Actually, they could go off of a Goodwill hunting spin on that. Like, I could see that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Joe, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you know, a lot of what Zach said, but uh, to me, there's there's um, three big takeaways. Uh, the first is that KM matters. Mm -hmm. And I, I think for a lot of organizations, they don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. But of course, when they start seeing these cool technologies, they, someone can go, oh, but this is this is KM. This matters. So so I, I want people to walk away with that thought. Um, the second thing is uh, to have the confidence to push it. Mm -hmm. Right. So that so that you can say, I've got this. I know how to do this so I can. Because sometimes a lot of these people are, I won't say putting your career on the line, but putting your name out there for your organization. Mm -hmm. And I want them to be, to, to say, I can see where this has been done and how this will work. Um, and then lastly, uh, uh, just, just the understanding of what these technologies are and how they fit together. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think too many people are focused on, on the knowledge aspect of knowledge management without thinking about uh all the things and tools you can do to make mm -hmm, them successful. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. this book was trying to bring those forward. That's awesome. Yeah. One of the, another popular video on my channel that I did not come up with the idea. I actually, a lot of my ideas for videos come from uh, the audience, you know, folks reaching out to me and asking me questions, which was, I have an ontology and I made it into a knowledge graph. I think now what do I do with it? <laughs> I was like, yep. Been there, done that. I've heard that many <laughs> times, right? And um, so that's a, a popular video, um, I think, because a lot of people find themselves doing that. Like there's the, let's create the mental model of things to kind of figure out how that the the knowledge fits together. And then you start to read up on it. And you're like, oh, I guess I could model this in a way that, you know, is more of like an ontology or, you know, even just a conceptual model, so to speak. And, and then it starts to get, you know, bigger and bigger and you start to like add things on until you have this really cool thing and you're really excited about it. And then you're like, wait, I have a CMS. What do I do? Does it fit? Does it, like, I, oh no, I have search. Does this go into search? Who uses this? Right. And you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of people that are in that space right now. So um, it sounds like this book will help them kind of find their way through that that gnarly um, mess or even, you know, some imposter syndrome, perhaps, too. Like, I think a lot of folks in KM find themselves there on accident. Accidental taxonomist, for instance. Um, it's not just taxonomy. It's a lot of this, right? And it's, you know, sometimes, it, myself included, like when I, before KM and Knowledge Graph and taxonomy got, you know, more press, so to speak, and more accepted as terminology, I really was trying to figure out like, okay, I, I mean, I think this is how it's supposed to work, like early on in my career. And, you know, as yeah. you go, you learn more things and you do more research and all of that. But you know, it, there's not, again, I think it kind of goes back to, there's not one career path to get here. So sometimes you're like, well, wait, I started right. out in this space and do I know what I'm talking about? Um, so I do feel like this will probably help uh, some folks get some validation as well. So. I, I, I hope so. I mean, I, I think there are some pretty basic concepts in the book that um, even those of us who have been in the field for a long time can read it and say, okay, so I have been doing that right. This is yep. the right approach. Yep. Uh, and and any any time we can help somebody vanquish some imposter mm -hmm. syndrome, I, I would call it a good day. <laughs>